Hello. Um, we're here, we made it. Uh, so today I'm doing something that I didn't actually ever see myself being able to do, to be honest, um, and it's starting my electrical system. Um, I've decided to essentially create a series of shorter, smaller videos and break it down section by section um, because I think it will be A, a bit easier to digest as I want to go into a fair bit of detail and B, it would just be easier for me to just sort of isolate each bit and do one bit one step at a time rather than try and do it all in one go. Before I say a single thing, a little disclaimer, I am not in any way a professional electrician or have any experience whatsoever in electrics. Um, everything I've learned has been over the course of the last few weeks. Although I did get um, a friend of mine who is an electrician to look over my circuit diagram just to check that I wasn't gonna kill anyone. Um, and he said it was good. So speaking of, I wanna show you my circuit diagram now. If like me, you didn't know much about electrics, this a lot of this won't mean a lot to you at the moment. Um, but this is my entire diagram and we're gonna focus in just on this bit today. So you can see you've got the leisure batteries, which are wired directly to a positive and negative bus bar. The bus bar is essentially where all the other systems are gonna be wired to. In between the positive bus bar and the positive terminal of the leisure battery, we're gonna have a circuit breaker just to protect the wire, and also um, a battery monitor, just so I can sort of monitor the voltage of the batteries and stuff. So let me show you where my electrics are actually going to sit in my van. I've built a little sort of housing thing. Um, obviously I'm sort of quite tight for space um, and I'm thinking of putting water there as I said and um, a heater there. So I decided to put it under this bench and then I saw and stole kind of um, a design from the climbing van. I've seen some other people do it as well. Um, I thought it was a really good idea. So. You can see here I've um, I've already marked out where everything's going to go and then obviously the cables are going to go through these slots. Um, and then I've added a little hinge um, and the batteries are going to go underneath. Um, obviously this is going to be plied and stuff afterwards so there won't be any access underneath. So in terms of the components I'm going to use today, I've um, got two um, 125 amp hour 12 volt AGM batteries got two bus bars which we use for positive and negative we've got a Victron battery monitor to get specific is the BMV 712 smart so it's got the Bluetooth and everything in it um, got a couple of meters of 35 millimeter thick um, cable so I've got red and black for positive and negative I've got a 200 amp circuit breaker um, and then I've got a variety of 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter cable lugs for the end of the cables um, and then finally I've got some heat shrink which will basically go around the edge of the um, lug and the wire to sort of form a tight seal. So I guess the first question really is why AGM batteries? There's a variety of different types of battery um, out there um, such as flood lead acid which actually have a a liquid in them in some cases that you need to keep topped up but they need to be mounted upright um, you've got gel batteries AGM batteries and then you've got lithium batteries which are super expensive which I can quite afford so I've sort of gone for the mid-range with these AGM batteries AGM are particularly good for if you're going to be using them a lot so discharging them charging them a lot um, and apparently they're better in colder climates and to be honest I think I'm going to be in colder climates rather than warmer climates and as I said, they're sort of mid-range price, but they are very heavy. <laughs> they're like at least 30 kilo, 30 kilo each. So I guess the first step really was to calculate how many batteries or how, you know, how big a battery I needed for my system. And to do that, you first of all need to work out the amount of power that all your um, electrical appliances are going to be using because you obviously want a battery big enough to power all those things. There's a bunch of really good tools online. And if you saw my solar panel video, I showed a solar panel calculator, but that calculator also calculates the size of battery you need. So I'll show you that now. So you can see on the calculator that it has a space to put all of your appliances. You put in the wattage of that appliance, and then you put in how many hours a day you think you use it. Um, and then it calculates a total watt hours for that appliance. 
um, and then it tallies up at the bottom the total watt hours per day all of your appliances will use. Now it's at this point I should probably quickly go back to science class because I actually had to do this myself because I couldn't remember any of it. This equation, watts equal volts times amps, is something that's going to come up a lot when you're working with electrical systems. There's an, a water analogy that people use a lot, volts being almost like the water pressure in a system. So they might have electrical potential in a system and then amps being current. So things like wires have an amp rating. The higher the amps, the more electricity can pass through it. So in the water analogy, you're thinking how big the pipe is, how, so how much water it can it can pass, pass through it. So volts times amps give you your watt figure, which is like a, a unit of power essentially. So a lot of appliances, well the majority of appliances that you use will have a watt figure. So when you're dealing with watt hours and you have amp hours as well, it's literally just how many watts an hour that appliance will generate. Going back to the calculator, you can see that it's calculated a total of 1,346 watt hours based on all the things I put in there. And so for a 12 volt battery, it's recommended 2,700 watt hours. Now that is because I've put in here that they'll discharge to 50%. So you're essentially only using half of that battery. So you have to double the watt hours. So it's calculated, so it's basically doubled 1,346 and got about 2,700 watt hours. Now, if we go back to our equation, if you divide those watt hours by 12, it gives you 225 amp hours. And so I have two 125 amp hour batteries, which is a total of 250. So that should be enough, right? <sighs> Stay with me. When connecting your batteries, you want to connect them in parallel. So this means you're connecting the positive to positive and negative to negative. And what this does is it keeps it at 12 volts, but it doubles the amp hours. If you were to connect it in series, so positive to negative, um, this would double the voltage to 24 and keep the amp hours the same, I believe. So yeah, we want to keep it as 12 volts because this is a 12 volt system. All of the appliances in this, well, the majority of appliances in this circuit are relying on 12 volts of power. So I am going to put my batteries in place and connect them up in parallel. Now, this will be the first time I've ever crimped a wire. So, <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> so I guess I need to measure up first. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? Another good way, when you're measuring further away, um, using strings is a really good idea, because obviously you can um, just cut it to the length of the string. So I reckon, now I've got these heavy duty wire cutters. Cut straight through. Mm. Bang. Bang, right? So to strip the wire, I've got this little tool off um, off Amazon. You put the wire in there, and then you can see it's got a tiny little blade. Um, and then it just goes around the wire like that, and apparently cuts it. So let's give this a go. Look who it is. Right now, I need to crimp this on the end of the wire to make a connection like that, for which I've got this crimping tool, which I've never used before. Let's see how this goes. Crimped. One thing I forgot it's a good idea to put the heat shrink on first because sometimes you can't get it over that. So I've got this heat shrink here, just goes over the end of the wire and then over the end of the lug. I always wondered what this attachment was for. So it's melted to the end of the wire. All right. So I've got my two wires for my battery. I'm just gonna put my battery in place and then wire it up. There we go, look, 
negative to negative, positive to positive. I kind of wish I hadn't put these hinges on per four doing this, it's a bit annoying, but before I start wiring everything else up, I'm going to fix my bus bars and my circuit breaker in place. I've mounted the positive and negative bus bars. And then underneath, I've put the circuit breaker. Before I start wiring up, I suppose the next point I just want to cover is sort of wire sizing. It's something that we'll, we'll talk about a lot in the, the rest of the videos coming. But basically when you're working with a 12 volt system, which is what this is, um, as I said, 12 volt va batteries, majority 12 um, volt appliances. Those appliances are expecting to get 12 volts from the battery. So one of the main things to consider in a 12 volt system is voltage drop. Basically resistance in the wires, the distance the wires are traveling, the size of the wires can cause voltage drop. And really, you want to kind of go as thick as you can with the wires. But obviously if you're running wires throughout your van, you can't put like 60 mil wires just everywhere. And also thicker wires are more expensive than thinner wires. As everything in this section anyway is quite close together, um, I'm, I chose 35 mil, but you can go, I could go even thicker, but I'm, I think that should be fine. And every wire has a amp rating. So this 35 mil wire has a 240 amp rating. So it means if the amps running through this exceed 240, it could damage the wire and in some cases set it on fire <laughs> and melt it. So that is why we add a circuit breaker. So the circuit breaker is 200 amps, so slightly lower than 240. So that means if it gets to two, 200 amps, the circuit breaker will go and cut the power through the system before it reaches that or exceeds that 240 amp limit. So I've connected the positive wire to the circuit breaker then the circuit breaker goes up and powers the positive bus bar so as i said before all the other circuits that i'm going to be connecting the positive end will be going to this bus bar and it's getting power from here so now i need to connect up the negative end and what i need to install now is this bad boy so let's have a bit of a um let's have a bit of an unboxing Right then, who's excited? Who needs that, eh? So this is the shunt. So you can see here, you connect one end to the battery. So similar to what we did with the circuit breaker, and then the other end goes to loads. So that's the negative bus bar. And then you see here it has a monitor. So it has a little monitor that you can attach. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to be doing some shelving up here, so I'm probably going to fit it up here. Um, and you've got a long sort of ethernet cable uh, that you connect it to. This is literally just going to sit here like this. Negative to here, and then straight to my bus bar. Um, and then it ha also has a positive cable which goes, connects to the positive terminal of the battery. So let's do that. There we go. So, negative cable goes all the way up through here and to the battery terminal of the shunt. And then this goes straight to the negative bus bar. And then it's got this little positive wire that is attached to the positive terminal. It's worth mentioning when you're connecting to the positive and um, negative, you want to connect to the opposite ends. So positive on that battery, negative on the other. Um, so the last thing I need to do is ground the circuit. Um, and you can earth the whole circuit to the chassis of the van because it's made of metal. Fortunately, someone had done that for me. You see here, there's a little bolt and that's fastened to the vehicle chassis there. I've got a black cable coming off. So I'm just gonna leave that up through here and attach it to the negative bus bar. 
that means as well, all the other circuits that I'll be attaching to the bus bars, anything attached to this negative bus bar will use that ground cable. So I don't need to individually ground every single appliance. So that's really worth knowing. So I'm gonna do that. There we go. Ground, shunt to battery. Here we go then, moment of truth. So let's turn the circuit breaker on. Nothing's exploded yet. Right, phone out. Victron app. So it's searching locally via Bluetooth. Let's check the Bluetooth on. Yep. So I had a slight meltdown because I couldn't get it to work, and then I realised this little guy is probably responsible for emitting the uh, Bluetooth. So I'm going to connect it now. So in the back. Okay, so I just need to set the capacity of the batteries, which is 250 amp hours. There we go. 13.4 volts. Now let's try the app. Open the Victron app. There it is. Update. So, firmware updated. Let's go in again. Check it out. So apparently I've got a hundred percent battery. Um, so they go, look, battery capacity, charged voltage, discharge floor is fifty percent. So you don't want to charge, discharge it below fifty percent. So cool. That's um, everything, I guess. I hope that all made sense. Next video is going to be about wiring up my VSR, so I can start charging those batteries when I'm driving. See you there.